NASA is planning on launching an unmanned spacecraft to investigate an asteroid called Psyche later this year. Psyche is about the size of Massachusetts, but with fewer potholes. It's one of the dozen or so biggest asteroids in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It's also one of the strangest. Scientists think that it might actually be the exposed metal core of a planet that didn't quite make it into being a planet. They think that Psyche's metal content could be as high as 60%, mostly iron and nickel. Demand for nickel these days is skyrocketing, mostly because it's used in electric car batteries. Even if Psyche turns out to be just 4% nickel by mass, it would hold the equivalent of all of Earth's nickel resources, times 3 million. At current nickel prices, that's more than 18 quintillion dollars. And that's just one asteroid. One study of more than 600,000 asteroids identified more than 700 asteroids that could be worth more than $100 trillion. That's more than the annual GDP of, of the, the world. world. But when you think about the size of that kind of asset, it raises a bigger question. Would that kind of wealth benefit the masses or just a few stakeholders? Space has the potential to make someone incredibly, obscenely, humongously, mind-bogglingly, filthy, stinking rich. Richer than everyone else put together, many times over, even the billionaires. And if there's one thing that rich people hate, more than having to fly commercial, it's paying taxes. Now, I know you might want to say everyone hates paying taxes, but that's not entirely true. In 2013, a Pew Research Center survey found that about a third of taxpayers like or love doing their taxes, compared with just over half who said that they don't like or hate doing it. When Pew looked at the reasons why people dislike doing their taxes, more than half answered that the paperwork was too complicated or that filing their returns took too much time. Only 5% of them said that they felt that they paid the government too much. So it's not so much that most people don't like paying taxes, people don't like filing taxes. In fact, surveys have found that solid majorities of Americans say that they trust the IRS and that it should get more funding. And that an overwhelmingly majority of Americans agree that paying taxes is their civic duty and that tax evasion is morally unacceptable. In fact, economists have trouble explaining why more Americans don't cheat on their taxes. They call it the puzzle of tax compliance. The truth is that when it comes to paying their taxes, most Americans are actually less selfish than the economists' rational decision-making models predict. The research also shows that the people who are most willing to pay their taxes are those with the lowest incomes. As socioeconomic status rises, so does the unwillingness to pay taxes. And near the top of the ladder, there are all kinds of ways to do just that. Beginning in 2016, a series of document leaks from law firms, corporate registries, and asset management firms have revealed a vast and secretive financial services industry whose primary aim is to maximize tax savings for the ultra-rich. Leaked by anonymous sources and examined by hundreds of investigative journalists around the world, the Panama Papers, the Paradise Papers, and the Pandora Papers reveal how members of the 0.01% stash their wealth in secretive offshore tax havens. Together, all three leaks reveal how trillions of dollars found their way through a labyrinth of shell companies, trusts, and other entities in tax-friendly jurisdictions, aided by lawyers, accountants, and money managers. With all of them sharing one goal, hiding financial relationships from tax authorities and other prying eyes. These leaks have brought attention to the money management practices of heads of state like Queen Elizabeth, celebrities like Ringo Starr and Elton John, and major corporations like Apple. Popular locations for parking wealth, often in the form of real estate, mega yachts, and private jets, include the British Virgin Islands, Panama, the Bahamas, the Seychelles, Samoa, Niue, Luxembourg, and, you probably weren't expecting this, 
South Dakota. This global wealth defense industry, as it is known, helps explain why, from 2014 to 2018, the richest Americans paid relatively nothing in taxes. An investigation of secret IRS files by the nonprofit journalism site ProPublica found that Jeff Bezos, whose income grew by nearly $100 billion during that time, had a true tax rate of just 0.98%. For Warren Buffett, his true tax rate is one-tenth of a percent. Elon Musk's rate was higher, a whopping true tax rate of 3.27%. Not to mention, in 2018, he paid no income tax. Part of the reason for these billionaires' featherweight tax burdens is America's obsession with taxing income instead of one's total net worth. Much of the wealth these men possess is in the form of stuff. Cars, yachts, jets, works of art, company shares, and so on. These things aren't considered taxable income until they are sold. As billionaires like Musk and Bezos take to the stars, this approach to taxation will almost certainly help them by allowing them to offset every dollar they earn by investing it back into their exploration business, right up until they get that quintillion dollar prize in hand. The space industry is growing, and private entrepreneurs are quickly becoming the vanguard of space exploration. Some nations like China and India are spending an increasing amount of money into the development of space programs capable of rivaling NASA, but others, like Luxembourg, are taking a different approach. Luxembourg is a tiny nation that has sustained itself off of tax loopholes and other convenient regulatory intricacies for decades. Now the tiny nation believes that it can become home to a broad, multinational group of space entrepreneurs. They're betting on the future success of ambitious entities that want to go into space, not for scientific progress or to strengthen their nation's geopolitical hand, but really just to make a ton of money. The U.S. continues to work towards a delicate balance as it fine-tunes its own space tax laws. Tax loopholes around where a company is located aren't new. Establishing a company's base of operations in a state or nation with favorable tax laws is par for the course. But the growing space industry is a testing ground for some complicated ethical and legal questions. How do you tax activities that are undertaken way, way, way outside the territory of any state? Like, in orbit. There is some legal precedent for understanding who is entitled to tax an air crew when they fly over a state or international waters. But what is international traffic when you're traveling through space? Since most trips to space begin and end in one country, even if that mission lasted a full year on a space station, you could make the argument that it shouldn't be considered international traffic. Space represents a unique challenge because there is plenty of uncharted territory. If you needed an indication of where the space-based wealth defense industry stands today, of the approximately 300 European satellites in operation, more than 10% are owned by the tiny but ambitious nation of Luxembourg. Though it might read like a hyperbole, today's Earth economy greatly depends on the space economy. Countless industries are completely dependent on communication satellites, GPS, and imaging satellites to function day-to-day -day in the modern world. But the private companies at the forefront of the new space race are there largely because of the initial effort and investment of NASA and other publicly funded government space agencies. The space economy is the end result of more than 60 years of research, development, and of course, incredible financial investment. Space entrepreneurs directly benefit from the investment of public funds into space research. This isn't strange though. There are plenty of industries here on Earth that were able to get off the ground or establish large enough profit margins because of public sector investments. President Eisenhower's interstate highway system kicked off in the 1950s. The cost of construction was approximately $114 billion, which in contemporary dollars is about $530 billion. The system has a total length of about 47,182 miles, making it the largest public works project in U.S. history. The distribution of virtually all goods and services involves interstate highways at some point. The $117 billion U.S. parcel shipping is an example of one industry that directly benefits from those thousands and thousands of miles of federally and state-maintained roads. 
Domestic shipping is a gigantic industry, but the space industry has been forecast to reach a valuation of $1.4 trillion over the next decade. Launching satellites, transporting stuff up to space for government space agencies, giving the rich a chance to go sightseeing in space, and even creating large space stations for space research, all have the potential for astronomical profits. The odds are that the future dangerous work of space mining and prospecting will most likely be done by robots. Robots that aren't subject to income or payroll tax because they aren't sentient. Yet. One idea would be to levy a robot tax, but given US history, that might be a bad idea. Robots might start expecting political representation. While the mega wealthy can stow away their wealth in the form of assets and investments, the average American doesn't have that luxury. For most everyday Americans, the greatest contributor to their personal net worth, their home, is subject to property taxes. This inequality hasn't gone exactly unnoticed. According to Pew, the thing that bothered a majority of Americans the most about the tax system is that the rich don't pay their fair share. One solution would be to shift the tax burden from labor towards capital. A wealth tax bases a taxpayer's tax liability on the total market value of assets they own. A 2020 survey found that nearly two-thirds of Americans supported that idea. Of course, levying a wealth tax in space means going out and figuring out exactly what those assets are, which is the perfect kind of job for a little government space probe. For more videos like this, subscribe to this channel right now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any great content. Also, look out for a curiosity stream on social media. Links in the description.